All right. Welcome back to Conscious Construction, the Conscious Enneagram podcast. I'm Abby Robbins. And I'm Brandon Hill. And today we're kicking off season six of Conscious Construction. And uh, we are talking about the Enneagram and spirituality. Yes. Yeah. So uh, first to address all uh, questions, Kimberly is not here with us. <laughs> you are not Kimberly Culbertson. Not Kimberly. <laughs> you are Brandon Hill. Uh, and you're going to be joining us this season, uh, which I'm super stoked on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kimberly had some scheduling conflicts, so she's not able to join us this season, but you'll see her later in the season. Um, but Brandon, how about you introduce yourself to the listeners so they have a sense of like who you are and, and maybe why you're here? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, who am I? <laughs> we Why don't need to get here? that existential just yet. Um, I am, first and foremost, uh, a friend of yours from the past several years, yes. especially through your Enneagram work. And spirituality is how yeah. we got connected. And through those conversations is is a big part of why I'm here. Um, in work, I do coaching. Yeah. Personal coaching, mostly for entrepreneurs. And in my past... I am, I was born a pastor's kid. <laughs> I still am a pastor's kid. My dad's still a, um, a pastor. And then I was a pastor for a while. Yeah. And so why am I here? Well, there's this huge spirituality streak through my whole life. <laughs> um, this kind of religious spirituality streak through my whole life and then entered the Enneagram and then entered you into my life and, and all of that, which has yeah. led me to being in this seat right now, excited for this season of conscious construction. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So I want to use this episode to kind of lay the groundwork for what season six is going to be like for listeners. Um, let them kind of know what we're working with, how things are going to flow. Um, and to take some time to kind of talk a little bit more about like our own journey. Um, I think it's important, you know, we're talking about spirituality and that can mean a lot of things Mm -hmm. to a lot of different people. And, uh, when we're talking about things like that, I think it's really important to get clear on uh, where we're coming from. Yeah, I'm curious where you're coming from. Right, I know, yeah. and I want to kind of like hear a little bit more of your story, uh, but kind of just to like clear the air and be like, this is this is the framework that we each use, um, and and here's how our frameworks are different, and uh, here's how it might be different from who we hear from in the rest of the season, because mm-hmm. I'm super excited that this season we have a little bit different format. Um, you and I are going to be doing teaching episodes where we talk about um, spiritual concepts in regards to the Enneagram types, uh, very similar to how Kimberly and I have been talking the last couple seasons about each one of the types, a different episode for each type, et cetera. Um, but then, uh, I'm going to be doing interviews with different people of that type, um, and getting them to talk about their spiritual experience. Um, so it's going to be fun to kind of go back and forth and, you know, we're going to be able to talk about concepts and, um, kind of nerd out on Enneagram stuff and spirituality the way that we do. Um, And then the listeners and the viewers are going to get the chance to see those types and uh, those concepts kind of played out in the interviews that we do. So uh, I'm super excited about that. So this is our kickoff episode. And then the next episode will be a teaching episode. And then we'll go into alternating teaching episodes and interview interview episodes. episodes. Yeah. Yeah. so that's super exciting. So Brandon, um, let's just like dive into, okay, what what are we talking about when we talk about spirituality? Mm, yeah, I, I love that question. <laughs> and uh, I'm so curious how you define it. I, I was thinking about this, how I define it. Mm-hmm. And um, so yeah, I, this, will, this will be fun. Here's how I think of spirituality today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not, not necessarily Yesterday six months or ago or <laughs> six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But how I think about spirituality today, and we can contrast this a little bit when we get into, uh, maybe a bit of where I came from and yeah. all of that, yeah. but let's start with right now, how I think about spirituality. I love this word and I'll probably use it a lot. This word okay. of connection. Okay. Yeah. When I think about spirituality, I think about it's learning to see Mm. the connection that's going on with everything. Yeah. It's learning to live into that connection. It's learning to create from that connection and create more connection. But for me, this the word connection helps me kind of, I even like having that word almost as like, almost like as a synonym for mm. spirituality mm-hmm. because it kind of helps break some of the, the ways that I thought about spirituality growing up. So it's helpful for to have this word of like, 
oh yeah, spirituality is not this, this, and this that I kind of used to relate to that as. Yeah, yeah. But it's instead for me, it's this idea of there is this dimension of connectedness going mm. on in and through everything. And yeah. spirituality is learning to see that, to recognize that that's going on because we so often don't yeah. see and recognize that. Yeah. Um, it's learning to live into that and live in alignment with the connection that's going on and participate in that, create more mm. connection. And so for me, this word connection, I'll probably use that a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Um, and, and if, it's, it might be weird to uh, use another word as a synonym for that word. Yeah. But for me, it's helpful to kind of shake up like, oh, yeah, spirituality isn't this, this, and this. And we'll yeah. get into maybe my story and where I come from. Um, but it's helpful for me to go, oh, yeah, spirituality is kind of this, like, connected dimension that I'm learning to recognize and participate more into. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Well, and I love, too, because we, have, we haven't said this yet, but you identify as a type 5 on yes. the Enneagram. Um, and when we talk about Enneagram 5s, there is this, like, kind of habitual striving to be detached. Mm -hmm. And so I love that like your definition of spirituality, like right out <laughs> of the gate is like, I'm going to go very counter to my so patterns. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that you've necessarily thought of it that I way. I mean, it's so true that like it is, it is so meaning and moving for me to use that word because it does mm -hmm. do that to me. It's this, yeah. it's this counter movement to, uh, what, you know, the first half of the, my life so far has been kind of this other movement away from connection and mm. this kind of, can I remove, detach, um, understand it all from up here. Yeah. And there's this like, ah, for me, spirituality is this, no, that, that is not spirit. Cause that used to be spirituality for me. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, this idea of connection reminds me like, oh no, it's for me, especially as a five, it's this movement in this other direction towards mm. connection. Yeah. I love that. You know, for me, I definitely feel that like my definition of a spirituality at this point in my life, um, draws a lot from that same idea that like there is a connectedness and, and, um, a real, uh, I mean, without being like, God, I, I'm such a cliche of myself. Sometimes I hear the words that I'm about to say and I'm like, Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but there is this, like this, this oneness, right. Yeah. That like, w and, and I think the word connection really highlights that well, yeah. um, in a, in a less cheesy <laughs> sort of way. Um, but for me, spirituality is like, it's tapping into this connectedness and, uh, being, being okay with the connectedness, um, allowing myself to feel and be affected by the world. Mm. Spirituality to me has this sense that like, it is, it is the thing that is beyond me. Mm, yeah. It's the thing that is beyond what like my senses, what I can see, what I can hear, what I can touch, what I can taste, et cetera. Um, but it's also the thing that's like beyond my capacity, beyond mm. my capability, which as an eight, I like to think is <laughs> pretty high and pretty, right? Like there's a lot here, but then there's something more mm. than that. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it's really important to have this connection to that thing thing, that isness, that sense of being, that whatever you want to call it, that is more than me. But I think for me, especially the need for more than just a connectedness, more than just a, you know, a passive kind of spirituality, like I have to believe for me personally that like spirit, what is beyond me is actively seeking me out mm. as well. Yeah. Um, and like wants what is best for me and wants more for me than I can create for myself. Yeah. Um, and these are, these are concepts I've been working a lot with and they, you know, in kind of hinting to like how I came up in spirituality, like there is some prickliness around that feeling mm -hmm. that like, you know, if we want to use the word God, right, which I'm sure will get thrown around a lot this season, yeah. but like this idea of like God wanting something good for me, um, really like challenges this part of me that believes I have to like fight for everything I want. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so there's definitely a way in which like I can see how my spiritual, you know, definition is like similar to you, like very at odds with 
how I might otherwise <laughs> go about my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting how the looking at ourselves through the types and the what spirituality means to us, it, it is flavored by that, but in a counter direction to yeah. what yeah. Our, our types kind of pull us into. Um, yeah. And I love your definition there. And I mean, your definition there even grows me and is a little prickly for me. <laughs> right. It's like, uh, like it's, I don't really like it. But it's such like, a good, it yeah. feels so healthy for me to, to even push my view of this interconnectedness of everything. It's like, and actually that there's something going on here that actually desires that has a will towards mm. me that I, mm -hmm. that I have to open up to. It's one yeah. thing for me to open up to. There's a connection going on here, but then also that that connection I don't know. It has a has a force behind it. Has a yeah. A will, it's, a it's desire. active. It's active. That, yeah. that pushes me a little bit too. Yeah. What feels like a really good growth edge for me. Mm. Well, I think that kind of leads us really well into kind of sharing a little bit more about how each of us kind of you know what is what has our spiritual journey looked like yeah. thus far, and like where did the enneagram come in and mm. what did it do? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, I'm curious, um, you know, and I'll, I'll share my stuff too, but like. You know, you shared you're a pastor's kid and you were a pastor. Like, to give us the rundown. What's the, what's the like, Cliff Notes version of the mm -hmm. Brandon spiritual journey? Yeah, it, it definitely starts uh, day one, day zero. I was born pa a <laughs> day pastor's zero. kid. Day <laughs> zero. I, <was, laughs> I was born a pastor's kid and raised in a Christian church, what I would call an evangelical church. Mm -hmm. um, it was non-denominational yeah. here in... Austin, um, was raised in that once I was in middle school, I became the worship leader through middle school and high school. And then the youth <laughs> pastor and I, yeah. um, started a church in South Austin, a small church plant where I was worship leader and a pastor there. And so I was kind of formed in this, uh, you know, spiritual mm -hmm. and religious and Christian context and container and really loved it. And yeah. even yeah. now looking back on it, so grateful for it. Mm -hmm. And loved so many of the ways that that shaped me. It also came with um, a particular worldview. Yeah, which <laughs> very particular, <laughs> very particular. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. It seems to me that it was very helpful for me in growing and developing in those young years to have something particular. Yeah. To grab yeah. onto, to root myself in, to be able to have structure to grow around. So I'm mm. very grateful mm -hmm. for that. And then there came a point where that structure, that worldview no longer fit and, and it kind of crumbled for me. So there was, yeah, yeah. um, in my, I was 26 and it all kind of just fell apart for me. Yeah. I couldn't put my finger on why it was falling apart back then, mm. but now looking back, I can see how there was this, this worldview that really was based on separation. Yeah. Ooh. That God is separate from me. Mm-hmm. Um, I am broken and in some ways kind of separate from myself. I, I need something external from me to come help bridge this gap between yeah, this yeah. external God and where I am. And there was this underlying worldview of separation that it was all built on that at some point just like no longer worked with mm, mostly mm -hmm. my experience. And I've wondered why it fell apart when I was 26. I've tried to put my finger on, was there a catalyst for that? Yeah. And as far as I can understand, I, I don't I don't know what to point to other than it was a death to that worldview by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. Just enough conversations, experiences of my own, hearing mm -hmm. and meeting other people where it's mm -hmm. just like this underlying worldview of separation is just no longer, I can't hold it anymore. And yeah. so it, it fell apart yeah. and it was devastating for me. It wasn't this exciting, liberating, like, ah, yeah. I'm no longer, it was this, oh my God, how do I now make sense of everything? Yeah. Because I used my Christian, this particular Christian worldview to understand my whole life and yeah. it no longer fit and worked. Mm. So there was very much a defining point in my life was this collapsing of that worldview and then trying to figure out how do I now make sense yeah. of spirituality, of my faith, of my religion, but really of everything in life. And that was for me kind of this journey towards this new worldview that I've built things on of this understanding of connection, mm, of, mm -hmm. of this interconnectedness, of this oneness yeah. of everything. And uh, and the Enneagram and you have been a, a huge <laughs> part of 
of that. Um, it was very early on and everything kind of falling apart for me that we met mm -hmm. for yeah. the first time. And I don't think we talked much about the Enneagram at that. I don't know. Pretty quickly the Enneagram came in. Yeah. Um, but the Enneagram, yeah, I found it shortly after. Uh, it'd be interesting for me to go back and like look at my Amazon purchases. <laughs> And I can tell you exactly when I found like, the Enneagram. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There's books, seven books, books, books in a books, row books. of trying to, of just going like, oh my gosh, this is a tool that really for me at first wasn't directly connected for me of, you know, there was a laundry list of books that I bought trying to understand yeah. my religion mm. um, again and just the deconstruction journey with that. But the Enneagram happened at the same time, probably not coincidentally, but um, but I didn't see it at first as a tool for helping me put my faith back together. But mm. in so many ways, it quickly became one of the most important tools for me with my spiritual journey. Yeah. And I think it was because it gave me a framework to understand and see better, like my my lens that I look through mm -hmm. at everything, including spirituality. Instead of just always looking through the lens, I was able to like look at my lens yeah. that I approach life with. Yeah. And it helped me understand like, oh, no wonder my like the shifting of how I intellectually understand my faith. Mm -hmm. No wonder that's so devastating for me as an Indian yeah. five. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like I live my whole life in my head and the, the way that I arrange my mental furniture. <laughs> it's like a, in some yes. ways... On the outside, all it is is like, oh, you're kind of changing how you intellectually understand the world. But it's like, no, this feels like death. And yeah, I don't like know this what to do. is it. Yes. Yeah. And and to be able to see how I detach, how I try to figure things out, how I to be able to like look at myself with that mm. kind of clarity and have a tool that helps me do that. And then also a mirror, a tool, a framework that helps me see. And this is kind of what you need. Mm, and it was yeah. the perfect time where it was such fertile ground in me. Yeah. To to go like, ah, I I need to do something different. And this is giving me a framework for what might be healthy for me. Yeah. Um, what might look like moving into more wholeness and more integration and how I move through the world, how I relate to the world. Mm -hmm. And so that's the Enneagram came in right at this pivotal moment in, in my spiritual journey. Yeah. And in so many ways have kind of been, um, I don't know, inseparable from each other as yeah. I... Yeah, so I'll I'll stop it there, but uh, but and let me let me maybe put a, a a last little thing on there is for me there was a stepping away from my mm -hmm. religion and Christianity and a few years where it was so good for me to become an atheist and mm -hmm. all the all yeah. the words and categories and identities that I I would have feared and yeah. just to be be that for a while and then my particular journey was coming back to Christianity or really it was coming back to religion. Yeah. And saying, ooh, there's something here mm -hmm. that I think is so valuable for me, that I think is so valuable for all of us, of having structures that help us reconnect. Yeah. And that's how I see yeah. religion is what are the structures, the practices, the communities, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. stories that help us find and experience yeah. connection. And so there's this, okay, I think I want something. I mm -hmm. want some kind of structure that helps me connect in a yeah. in a spiritual kind of way. And so what tradition am I going to choose? What, mm, what mm -hmm. structure am I going to choose? And for me, it was coming back around to choosing, I'm going to choose Christianity. Yeah. As much as it kind of like irked me and I had to like wrestle yeah. with that and it yeah. felt like, oh, I want to throw up when I think about it. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, there was this like, but it's the one that like, it gets under my skin in the most like aggravating and beautiful way. Like mm, mm -hmm. there's, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've, I've dabbled in some other traditions but nothing kind of it resonates at that deep yeah. level that, you know, these stories, these practices, this mm -hmm. way of relating to the mystery that we're all swimming in is the one that just, it just gets me. You yeah. know? And, and yeah. I, I like to talk about it as kind of like family where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, family is just, it, there's no bond like family. They get under your skin more than anybody. They make yeah. you angry yeah. more than anybody. And there's just like no love and, and, and resonance that come that's like family. Yeah. Well, you know, so much of your story like resonates both with like 
I mean, it definitely resonates with my story and the way that like things kind of shook out, like some of the key turning points are a little different. But I think for me also, there's this piece of like coming back mm. to this tradition. Yeah. And like you talk about it like family and I like to talk about it like your native language. Yeah. Right. That like it, it doesn't really matter uh, how many languages you learn. Right. Um, you know, you're still kind of you're still steeped in one mm-hmm. uh of somebody man key key thing about me in the podcast if this is the first episode you're listening to i never remember who said anything <laughs> um so i'm always like going to be up front and be like i didn't come up with this but I will, I will not be able to tell you who did. Okay, I'm actually having one of those moments right now. Okay. When you just said the native language thing, I'm like, I've said that before. Did I steal that from you and not <laughs> and think that that was who my own knows? idea? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. All this to say is that I heard once someone say, uh, you're not fluent in a language until you dream in it. Mm. And I think that that has when we think about like how deep a language has to be in our psyche before you dream in it, I think that for me, I've noticed there are so many people who've gone on similar journeys that that we have similar to what we have and, you know, have dabbled in other practices. You know, I've, um, I'm a yoga therapist and I, I still, I lean really heavily on the Eastern traditions that I kind of sought out as I left Christianity um, and this like very Western approach to Christianity. And, you know, I lean on these practices and these principles really heavily, but there's something about the religion or the language that I dream in. And, and it took me a long time to, to admit to, and then be okay with the fact that, that's Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't like that. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, in the same yeah. way that like, I think because we were so steeped in it and we were steeped in a particular version of it that is um, distinctly harmful uh, to a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, you know, where where religion has kind of gotten in bed with empire and, you know, all of the, you know, kind of consequences thereof. Uh, it, it took a lot for me to like be open to the fact that there are different ways of going about this tradition. Yeah. Um, and that really opened a lot of doors for me. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in a very religious household um, and got, you know, when I was, you know, middle school, high school got really uh, into my religion. Like I was like, this is it. And in my typical eight way, I just went all out, pedal to the metal. Uh, I was a worship leader. I, you know, spent a month in Africa as a missionary and like did all the things. Um, but for me, the the timeline was a little accelerated. Like it was like 17. Mm. And it wasn't this like slow paper cut kind of falling apart. It was like like overnight demolition, like building was there. And then the next morning building was not. And like, I remember feeling like, Oh my God, I woke up and nothing made sense. Like the whole thing was gone. Like the city block had just been leveled. That's, I mean, in many ways, that's how it felt. There was, there was a particular day I woke up and it didn't work, but I think it was like looking back, it's like, Oh, there's so many things leading up to that Mm -hmm. day. But then yeah. I didn't realize one day I was just going to wake up and be like, oh, there oh was it's gone. There like, was a straw just, that broke the back. <laughs> it's just like, oh, there used to be a building here. And now it's just like an empty lot. Yeah. And I could not function. Like, yeah. it was, I don't know how it was for you, but like, it was just. It was, um, for me, it was so. Like, I see my type playing out so strongly as I look back. Obviously, I didn't know anything about the Enneagram at that point. But I was looking, as I look back, I can see the just, the fight mm. in it. And and there was a lot of time, you know, it was like 17, it was like mm, maybe a quarter of the way into my senior year of high school. You know, at this point, I am the president of the high school uh, Bible study. Oh, you know, really? like I've organized, you know, I was the worship leader for the youth group. I'd organized uh, like organized a mission trip at like a, like a public school wide clothing drive 
to take, you know, clothing and shoes, all these things down to like Juarez, Mexico. Like it was like, I like that was my thing. Yeah. And that's how that's how people knew me and saw me. Mm. And I remember just kind of like coming back and having this fight like. No, you have to prove to me that this makes sense. Like, and an almost like, I'm going to take you down with me sort of vibe. Like, if I'm going down, we're all going down. And, of course, that's not necessarily how it played out. Um, but it was really, uh, it was really, really challenging. Because it, for me, it wasn't just losing kind of this framework, right? It was losing my community. Yeah. Right? And that was that was hard. And I was, you know, lucky that I had you know, a friend who was going through a similar thing, you know, I don't know if we influenced each other or how that worked out, but it was nice having somebody kind of going through the motions at the same time. That's so helpful. Yeah. Like, and, and I don't like, I, I think my life would have been very, very different had I not had that, but you know, it was like that happened. And then I watched my, like, what I like to call the slide to five and I got every book mm. on comparative religion that you could find. Like I'm reading like just massive 1200 page tomes on like, <laughs> how have we, how have we as a species related to the concept of God for the last 5,000 years? And yeah. I'm like, I need to know, like what I was told is not right. I got to find what's right. Yeah. You know, the like five, like I need to intellectually understand this before I can re-engage. Um, and it took, it took a long time, um, you know, like that was kind of at the height of it, you know, around 18 or 19. And, and then I, you know, I was, I was always kind of like missing a piece of something, mm. you know, uh, a, a spiritual director, a spiritual teacher of mine was like, oh, well, you've always been a seeker. You know, like I, I took, even from an early age, I took a lot of ownership in my faith at the time. And then when it crumbled, I was really trying to find the next piece that fit mm. in that, you know, space. And, you know, uh, several years later, you know, I, I tried to kind of put it out of, out of sight, out of mind, which didn't really work. Um, but several years later I found yoga and meditation and I was like, Oh, there's really something here for me. And so I started diving into like the Eastern philosophical stuff. Um, and then like funnily enough, if funnily <laughs> is a word. It is. Okay. Right now. <laughs> it is now. We've, we've named it. It is for this conversation. Um, my yoga teacher who like introduced me to yoga and these practices was the wife of the Episcopal priest in town. Fun. Yeah. So, so, you know, she's like teaching me these like Eastern concepts and all of these things. And then like all the while she's like having this, Christian experience mm. and, uh, a, you know, an Episcopal church is so wildly different than what I grew up yeah. in. I was like, huh. And it, for me, it was different enough that I could like dip my toe in and be like, what, what's all this about? I Why is relate. everybody, it needs to be different enough. Yeah. But then there's also something about it being familiar. Yeah. That like, there's a, there's a familiarity to the story and kind of the through line mm -hmm. of it. Um, but packaged and practiced in a wildly different way. Um, and so that was kind of my first foray into, Oh, well maybe there's a different way to go about this. Maybe there's something that could work. Maybe there's something worth salvaging in, yeah. in this experience of my tradition. Um, and at that same time I was introduced to the Enneagram. Mm. Wow. And so the Enneagram and yoga are kind of like doing their work on me this whole time. And I'm like, I I'm bought in like almost day one. I'm like, Oh, okay. Like this works. This is telling me exactly why my life is just blown up and why everything is falling apart. You know, aside from spirituality, like, I had kind of dealt with my spirituality and several years later I was like, oh, I'm queer and I need to literally change everything about my life at this point because it's not going to work. And, you know, so starting from like square one again, you know, I feel lucky that I dealt with my spirituality before I had to deal with my sexuality Oh yeah, because I know a lot of people who had to deal with them kind of simultaneously sure, and there's a yeah. lot more like 
people often assume that, you know, when I talk about like leaving the church or that sort of thing, that like it was realizing that I was queer that like oh, that set that me on that journey. Yeah. And that was not interesting. Not right. at all. Like I had no clue, like just n- not, not even the slightest clue. Interesting. Um, but I was dealing with my spirituality and I kind of got that to a place where I could function and I was feeling good. And then this question of like, Oh, the, the like romantic relationship that I'm in, it's not working. This is not the right direction. This isn't working for me at all. And then it was like, okay, dealing with sexuality, restarting my life. Uh, and then yoga and the Enneagram come in and I'm like, Oh, these are things that I can actually use, right? These are like, you know, they're not tangible, so to speak, but like they are concrete practices Mm -hmm. that I've like put into my life that are making a difference. And then when I moved to Austin, I found a community that had that, you know, they were a Christian community, but they were a contemplative Christian community, which I had never heard of before. And I was like, what is this? And it was like, it was like yoga and church had a baby. (laughs) And I, and like they taught the Enneagram and, you know, the school of work that the Enneagram comes from the Gurdjieff work. And I was like, oh, this is a way that I can relate to this. This is a way that it makes sense. And I can not just dip my toe in, like dip my toe back in this tradition, but like I can really show up to this the way that it's being presented in this space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through that community and through these teachings uh, and this kind of like new application of Christianity, like I've really, I've found my footing and I've found something that's like solid enough for it to be a foundational like piece of my life. Mm but like open and expansive enough that like it's not it it's not easily threatened Mm, you know where i feel like so much of my early faith journey was like you have to be prepared against the temptations (laughs) of the devil and you know spiritual warfare and all and i'm like oh yeah that all that strength kind of uh, fronting is actually a very frig- fragile. Yeah, place. yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that feels, you know, even like your language around that feels so resonant both to like my spiritual experience, but also like the experience of my personality and my type mm. that this like fronting is really protecting something very mm. yeah sensitive and soft and squishy and eh, don't look at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but one of the things that I learned through this you know, contemplative Christian community and through the Gurdjieff work was that like Gurdjieff talks about how we need this particular and solid and strong personality yeah. if we want to transform. And uh, it's like, yeah. and, and so you shared in your story about how like there's something here that like you're grateful for, you're grateful mm-hmm. for the stability and the solidity that this, you know, worldview offered you. Um, and that's so in alignment with, you know, the fourth ways work, Mm. you know, Gurdjieff's work that like you have to start from someplace strong. And the way that he talks about it is that like, you have to have a strong personality for essence to feed off of. Oh, and so it's like this interesting, like, you know, personality comes up over the essence and protects it, you know, when we're young And then you want that to grow and develop and be strong so that when this time comes that the essence comes forth, it's like it has something to feed off of. It has something to work with. And and I've always found that idea really, um, you know, I I, I realize in myself that I like it because that's also my experience Mm -hmm. that like I have a big personality. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Like I can be a lot and... There's some value in that. And I see that in the context of this like spiritual journey as well that like, oh, there was really something here that I had to like digest more fully in order to get to where I am now. Yeah. And I think uh, I would imagine that, you know, Gurdjieff is talking about when you say strong personality, you know, your personality, Enneagram AIDS, that can, that can kind of lead towards that kind of big in your face kind of yeah. personality. Yeah. But like, I would imagine, you know, any of the types can the, be strong in their strong, own way. Can be strong, can be saturated, can be um, 
edgy, can be kind mm-hmm. of rough, whatever that looks yeah. like for their essence to be. Cause like I wasn't, a, I was, you know, most people would have called me shy, yeah. very withdrawn, isolated. I love time alone. Just so in my head. Mm-hmm. But man, I was so in my head. Like, yeah, like there's, there's a way in which that movement was so strong. Yes, yeah, so it was so strong. Yeah. And and it did. It gave me something for Essence to feed on that I'm looking back. There's a part of me that cringes and there's a part <laughs> of me that's like, oh, I'm so like, yeah, it gave me it gave me. Yeah. Something to feed off of. Yeah. And I look back and I'm like, yeah, I have that same kind of like look back cringe kind yeah. of vibe around a lot of my, you know, uh, adolescence and you know even into early adulthood and it's like yeah but man did that serve me yeah it's this like, cringe but it's also like man that was that was holy that was just, there there yeah. is something about it that's like i feel like i'm still learning about you know the nature of god from that time mm. not because not because I was like believing the right thing or doing the right thing, but like there is, there is a way in which all of this belongs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to live that way anymore, but because I don't want to live that way anymore, I have the opportunity to step into something really new and powerful. And, you know, that's very eight-ish of me to use that word, but like, it's power in a it's a different kind of powerful it's like a a receptive power a transcendent kind of power that's not about controlling myself or other people or the environment but a power that's about like feeling and holding and accepting the world as it is um and so i think it's important that we have that kind of um strong flavor to our like early experiences. Um, and then, you know, like leaving and like putting those aside and being like, no, that's not it. And then coming back around and be like, but there's something here that it's not it, but it's part of it. Yeah. And, and to look back on the journey and to go, man, I'm so glad I'm not there. And that was necessary. Yeah. I had one time I heard somebody say, it's like, it'd be like, stacking all these boxes so that you could climb up to this place and then looking back down on the boxes and going, you stupid boxes. Yeah. (laughs) Like, no, that was the very, you're no longer there, but that was the very thing you needed to get to here. And I love that you're talking about this strong, it's making me think about being a parent and, Oh God. Yeah. You know, the parts of me that, that want to shape and mold these kids, but to remind myself, don't, don't beat out of them. Mm -hmm. That strong, personality that they need to develop right now yeah and trust yeah you know that the spiritual journey is going to happen for them in their own way yeah their own strong flavor that they're going to develop and then we'll see how essence feeds off of that later and yeah man we could have a whole conversation about spirituality and parenting yeah but that we should save that for another day (laughs) for sure but let's talk a little bit about like how has the Enneagram been supportive like let's get more into the nuts and bolts of like how has the Enneagram been supportive for you Mm. in your journey Ooh, I'll start with what I was saying about it was the most clearly I would ever looked at my lens rather than just through my lens. Mm -hmm. It was the Mm -hmm. most clear language. I'm sure I'd, I know I'd done strengths finder and had five five words that told me, Hey, you're kind of good at this. (laughs) You're good at this. I had four letters from Mm -hmm. Myers-Briggs and what I'm sure I'd done those things and had this, but there was this, this clear picture that I was even kind of averse to personality-based things. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I was a little bit better than them. I was a little bit too smart for them. Mm-hmm. Like maybe if you're if you're smart enough, your personality doesn't stay confined to it. So to have something come along and say there's just there's yeah types and there's only nine and there's whatever, but um, but it was so it, just the way that it resonated so quickly. Mm-hmm. Somebody laid them out for me, and I was like, ah, I don't know which one I am, but five, seven, and eight really resonate. And they were like, well, actually, we have one that's our core and we have two others that we move to, one in stress and one in security. And I was like, ah, for me, for me, my core one is five. And I particularly move to uh, seven in stress and eight when I feel secure. Yeah. And then I, you know, buy some books on it and I'm like, oh, that's what all everyone (laughs) from there. I was hooked. I was like, what are the odds that I could have like um, that this thing would know 
my movements that particularly mm. I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, what, what is this sorcery that yeah. this thing knows me this well. And, um, so it was the most clearly something had kind of shown me my, my lens and particularly like what I'm motivated by. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just to like have that kind of language to look back over the, your life and just be like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Everything yeah. makes sense. And I was, I was playing out from these things that mm-hmm. I thought was me and it is me, but it was also these parts of me that were seeking things and wanting particular and, and to then see the, especially when it comes to spirituality and faith, cause that's such a huge uh, part of my life and how I yeah. made sense of everything to see, Oh, that's how I related mm-hmm. to my religion. That's mm-hmm. how I related to this tradition. That's what I was trying to get from it. That's yeah. what it was doing for me Yeah, to be able to see all those things through my type. Yeah. Was like, Oh my gosh, it makes sense. It also helped me understand other people and why, Yeah, you know, understand why other people came to spirituality or came to my youth group or came mm-hmm. to my church or whatever. Mm-hmm. From these other places and they weren't as interested in relating to it the same way yeah. that I was and yeah. they were getting different things out of it. And it's almost interesting to, to think about like from a Christian evangelical perspective, like what the gospel means to each Enneagram type. Yeah. And for me, yeah. it was definitely this, this way of, oh, now you can understand mm. everything. You can now figure out everything in the correct way and you can now act and live in a competent way in the world because you are intellectually understanding it all. Yeah. And, and other people were, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. that was the gospel for me. Yeah. It was the gospel of correct understanding and mm. capable, competent living. <laughs> and like, yeah. That was a, so to, to be able to have something that, that's holds up that mirror. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, it's devastating. It's confusing. Um, but it also, it just came at the right time where I was like, yeah. I, need this because I'm trying to figure out how to move forward. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I didn't then without the Enneagram, I would have probably put together something new, but in the same way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I mean that again, like it so resonates with like my story and I look at how I was engaging with yoga and, and even engaging with the Enneagram in these like early, you know, what I consider my like early like spiritual growth, you know, personal development sort of phases. And I look back and like, I, you know, I talk with my clients about this all the time. It's like, we, we find these things and then we, and even the Enneagram and we use them yeah. from the perspective of our types mm-hmm. before we really even realize what we're doing. Yeah. Like, and that's another one of those like boxes that we stack right? You, you kind of have to go through that at some point. And I look back and I'm like, oh man, I was diving into this work, spiritual development, self-observation, personal development, all of this stuff. I was diving into this because I felt like if I do all these things and I become this ascended spiritual master, yeah, right? Like the then nobody can hurt me. Mm. Like that was the motivation. Mm. And I remember like uncovering that and being like, oh no, because the truth is to be human is to be vulnerable and to be hurt. And this, like, I, I feel so grateful to the Enneagram for kind of highlighting this journey, even though I initially started using it as like, well, if I do this, this, and this, and X, Y, and Z, and I'm observing this, and I'm feeling that, and I really, you know, move into my emotions and all of the things, right? Then then I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be safe. <laughs> Nothing's going to hurt me. Yeah, yeah. And it's like all the while, like, you know, these practices, these philo- philo- philosophies, all these things are just kind of whispering like, it doesn't work that way. And I'm just like, oh, shit. And re-engaging with these things in that like different motivation, taking this different like look at it, this different perspective at it. It's like, oh, allowing myself to be receptive, allowing myself to be affected Mm -hmm. by the world. There's a way in which that this is actually like allowing me to be more human instead of being the like superhero that I imagine myself to be. Yeah. But it's like, at first that's not how I was relating yeah. to the same Enneagram. With, same with me. It was just another tool to better understand. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's a great tool for that. Yeah. Like it's kind of this, but it's, it's, 
because it's so powerful, even trying to use it to better understand things, mm -hmm. especially from my type, it's, it's this, it's this paradox of through deeper understanding, you're actually letting go of understanding. Yeah. Through trying to re-ravel yourself, I'm unraveling. It's like, yeah, it's like through trying to be powerful. I find that like the, re the receptivity and the openness is the actual power that I wanted, mm. but I was afraid of. And it's like all of these pieces and like you can go around the circle. And what's interesting, we, I've already recorded a few of the interviews that we're going to have in the rest of the season is like, there are elements of that piece showing up in all of these mm. stories yeah. that like the spiritual journey is not what we thought it was for each type around the circle. Right. right. You need those first steps. Yeah, exactly. Thinking it's this. It's, it's like, I need to think that it's this in order to get moving. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, I had a spiritual teacher who was like, if we knew what, if we knew what we were getting into, we would have never signed up. <laughs> right. And so it's you like, you need to be diluted. You need diluted just enough. Yeah. There's this bait and switch <laughs> of the journey. Of yeah. Like, hey, you, you, you think it's going to make you more protected and uh, more powerful. Hey, you think it's going to help you better understand. And finally you think it's going it to make you out. more connected or it's going to make you more peaceful or more perfect or more yeah. outstanding or more unique or more secure or more excited and enjoying life. It's like you go around all nine types and there's there's a way in which we relate to it initially that we think it's going to give us what we want yeah. when in reality it gives us exactly what we're avoiding and then it turns out that's actually what we wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. There's a, a kind of a spiritual teacher of mine that talks about like um like we all kind of need a guru. But yeah. Like the only good and healthy guru is the one that kind of lets you believe that they're your guru at the beginning only to then slowly dissolve you of the notion that you need a guru, that there is anybody outside of you that you ultimate. And so it's like the Enneagram is a great healthy guru in that way that kind of mm -hmm. lures you in like, hey, I've got all the secrets. Hey, I'm going to help you get yeah. exactly yeah. what you want. And and then dissolves you of this idea that you started the journey with. Yeah. You know, I this is not where I intended this conversation to go, but that's exactly why I wanted you as a co-host for this season. <laughs> because this is how our go. conversations go. <laughs> But there's, uh, over the last several years, as the Enneagram has gotten more and more popular, yeah. right, there's a way in which I think, at this point, a vast majority of Enneagram enthusiasts are using it in this guru kind of way. Mm, yeah. And... I think if if there's if there's one uh, I mean I don't like to use the word goal but if there's one aim or or wish that I have for this season it's that it can help people who are interested in the enneagram who are in this like oh I'm going to use it to be more powerful I'm going to use it to be more uh, to understand more and be more competent right like the folks who are really using it in this way that kind of reinforces their type that through this season through the way that we talk about these things. Um, the Enneagram can kind of dissolve for them. Yeah. You know, mm. I do, I do any, like I lit, like it is my job to talk about the Enneagram, <laughs> right? Like I'm, I'm coaching people, uh, you know, all, all day, every day, essentially Monday through Friday. And I don't think many people realize how little I talk about the Enneagram, <laughs> right? Like there's a way in which it dissolves and through that dissolution, it becomes part of everything. Yeah. Right. And you can see it everywhere and you can feel it. And then you have this way of moving because of it, not in a like external rigid way, but in a like, Oh, I can see the fluidity of the system and I, I don't have to talk about it. Right. It's just there. I can lean into it. I can live into it. And the same way, right, that it's like it's that like dissolution of my attempt to be more powerful mm. or my, you know, you could call it like a changing the definition of power mm. to yeah. some extent, right, into something that's honestly a little scary for me, right, it's a little extra spicy, as we like to say. <laughs> um, and I hope that this this season in particular can be a real resource for people who you know, maybe have used the Enneagram to kind of build that foundation in a way that's a little too rigid, that's a little too fragile. Um, and we can kind of help move them from that space into this like dissolved living into what I thought I didn't actually want kind of way. 
Yeah. Gosh, that's so good. And I don't even want to comment on it. I just, <laughs> I wish, and this isn't appropriate for podcast formats, but I just want like seven minutes of silence right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, like, I'll just is, leave it and we'll just sit here. That's not good for content. On YouTube, but, uh, just like, <laughs> like what happened? Uh, what happened to the computer? Did it freeze? <laughs> Uh, but that's just so good. That's yeah. so good. That's all I'll say is that's this is so this good. is your reminder to set a timer after this episode is over to sit in silence yeah. for seven or eight minutes. <laughs> just see how it just see how it feels. Yeah. So I I because we have mics in front of us, I just want to jump on that concept, but I'm like, mm, no, just let that sink in for myself. Because yeah. yeah, it it's so true. That way that we are types, we're introduced to a powerful tool. Mm-hmm. And so it can just, it's, and it's necessary kind of, yeah, we, absolutely. It, we use it to double down. We, we bring our type to this tool. Mm-hmm. We further mm-hmm. entrench into it for a little while, but if we keep going and hopefully yeah. through things like this and this season and these interviews, maybe we start to go even deeper into it to where yeah. it does start to dissolve. And, um, yeah, it's a good healthy guru kind of lures us. Hey, I'm going to give you everything you want. Mm-hmm. And what you actually want is this. Yeah. You don't know it yeah. yet. Mm, yeah. yeah. And so, okay, that kind of brings me as we're like wrapping up uh, this episode, like that kind of brings me to uh, talk a little bit more about the structure of the season that I'm really excited about because the way that you and I are going to talk about the teaching episodes is that I will have already recorded the interview, right? So like the interview will have already happened and I'm already super stoked because I've done a few of the interviews and oh, I'm just, they, they have turned out in the same way that we're talking about how we're relating to the Enneagram in a way that is not what we wanted, but it's better than we could have imagined. <laughs> this is how the interviews wow. are playing out. I spent a lot of time, you know, before I started interviewing folks of like, oh, well, what do I want the structure to be? What questions am I going to ask? How are we going to talk about and wrestle with these different topics, these different, different like spiritual pieces of the Enneagram? You know, am I going to talk about the holy ideas? Are we going to bring up the vice and the virtue? Are we going to do this and that? And I got so fucking overwhelmed that I was just like, I can't, I can't power my way through this. I can't control my way through these interviews. I'm just going to let go. Right. Which is deeply, (laughs) it's so fucking dumb. I was like, I hear it. I hear what I'm saying. I hear it. And I'm just like, and so in the moment I was just like, all right, we're just going to like, uh, you know, we're, we, we're starting off with the question, how do you define spirituality with each one of these episodes? And it's like, we're not, we're not, we're not beating around the bush. We're going to dive right in. And, and we don't, we talk so little about the Enneagram. It's actually magical to see how each one of these types just lays out the holy idea, mm. the virtue, all of these spiritual concepts are just there in their stories. I didn't have to ask about them. I didn't have to like prod them to talk about this certain thing. It's like, it's there already. How surprising. Well, and it's not surprising. (laughs) And that's the beautiful (laughs) thing is that like, there is something really true and powerful happening through this tool that we like, it, it's it's happening whether we know it or not. It's happening whether we speak to it or not. And and much like what you were talking about earlier in this like connectedness, right? It's about leaning into it. It's about seeing it where it's already been, it's always been there, but now we're gonna tune into it, right? Yeah. Like setting your mind and your heart and your soul to the right frequency. And it's like, that's what these teaching episodes are going to do is kind of help set you to the right frequency to see what's coming up in these interviews, because it's been so cool to have it just kind of unfold so naturally. Mm. Um, And so we'll be kind of talking about the concepts and the kind of like spiritual ideas playing out for each one of the types. And then you'll get to kind of see how that just plays out naturally, right? So, and again, like we're going to record the teaching episodes after we record the interviews for that reason. Um, Cause now I'm like, Oh, this has start- worked out so well. I want to just like, I want this to just keep coming through. Mm. Um, and, and, and I'm excited to see how these concepts play out when people aren't prodded. Mm. Right. Yeah. Cause I think it's, it's one thing to get somebody talking about the Enneagram. It's a very different thing to get someone talking about their life. And like 
you got to do a certain amount of like dance or, you know, um, performance, right. To talk about the Enneagram, especially if you're not an Enneagram teacher, but you can be so real when you talk about your life and when you talk about your story yeah. and it's through that realness, we see what's really happening, um, with these concepts and these ideas. So, uh, I'm really excited to dive into that. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. Yeah, this is going to be good. Um, thank you all so much for hanging with us. Uh, I'm, like I said, super thrilled for this season. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're enjoying the podcast, send an episode to a friend, like, or maybe two friends. Or if you have a lot of friends, you could send one episode to all your friends. That is that is a thing you could do if you want it. Just throwing that out there. Uh, but make sure you're subscribed to uh, get updated when we drop new episodes. We're going to have new episodes coming out every week. Um, and if you're listening to the audio-only version, be sure to leave a rating and a review. Drop a comment down below and tell us what you're most excited about for this next season, um, either in the podcast or uh, on YouTube. And... Brandon, where can people find you on the internet? Ooh, not many places. Brandonhill.com <laughs> is the in, best in place. In true five, pl- in true <laughs> yeah. five stance, like uh, not many places. <laughs> not many you places cannot find now. me. <laughs> um, but my website is Brandonhill.com. Yeah, and I keep that updated with whatever I'm currently doing. Yeah, so that's the best place. Perfect. And you can find all my work. Uh, reach out if you're interested in coaching or spiritual development. All these good stuff. Uh, at consciousenneagram.com. Awesome. Let's get we will it. see y'all in the next one. Love it. Woo! We did it. <laughs>